All right, hi everyone. Um, so I prepared um, a keynote for this. Uh, all right, so this is just my company. This is for our template. So we start always start with that. Uh, let's quickly hop over to, you know, me. This is me, Ralph Egas. Two email addresses. One is for my company that I'll talk a bit about. And then uh, the other one is uh, iCloud, from the, like the, the uh, anything I would use to communicate about anything except for my company. And this presentation today is about the dual stick update. And let's, so this is my program for, for, for today. So I'm gonna give you a short introduction then, tell you a bit about what dual stick really is, then how it works, uh, then the project, the stage where it's in and where it's going, and then uh, a kind call to action uh, for, from the community, and then some final thoughts. All right, introduction. So a bit about me. I'm uh, Ralph Higgins, like I said, I'm the founder of Abstraction Sole Proprietor in 2007 and co-founder of Abstraction Games BV in 2011. And Abstraction is basically a software company specialized in video games and video game technology. And I've been leading the company as CEO ever since. Um, hobby wise, I engage in, in coding, but nowadays also in industrial architecture, apparently. Well, you know, I print 3D stuff and electronics engineering to at least a certain modest extent. At least to say I'm a sucker for the upcoming maker industry because of its uh, emancipatory appeal. I also love all computers, especially Amiga and C64, and I own way too much hardware and software according to my wife, although she referred to that specific defect with different terminology. Um, so this story starts in Amiga Ireland 2019. A couple years ago was my first like real Amiga e event, apart from back in the days where I there was this hobby computer club and we did some Amiga stuff, but um, it's been a long time and I've always been interested in retro and, and old computers. Uh, but Amiga Island was like the first time in a long time that I, you know, invested some, some more time into visiting beautiful, nice people, uh, people engaging with all kinds of stuff and really cool to see that it's still alive and kicking, right? And, but I couldn't help but notice like the vast majority of the attention went towards playing old games, like in competitions and all that kind of stuff, which is great. But it left me wondering like, uh, you know, is, is there more? And on technology doing really cool stuff with new Amigas. Um, that is like, uh, you know, there's, there's a small part of the community population that actually owns one, like I do, like an X5000, but like it's not big. And so I'm just, thinking there's there's a gap here and maybe there's there's something more we could do to make sure that like amiga is going to survive yet another 40 years right so so we were thinking and we i mean like uh, my brother jay uh who's also working in abstraction uh and my cto and generally partner in crime and associate in the, in the company eric and we were there with the three of us and in the hotel room we were thinking okay is there a project that we could create that people might be waiting for, uh, but not necessarily know it. And um, so, like I said, games is big, old games is big, but what about like um, innovating something where new games could be played in a new kind of fashion on old computers? Um, so enter Joystick, a new controller for all machines with a nine pin Atari joystick port. All right, so what is dual stick? A twin analog stick controller. There's two sticks, each two axes, eight buttons, four face buttons, two option buttons like select or start, and two shoulder buttons. So this is the first prototype. This is what we presented at um, the beginning of this year at Amiga uh, Ireland Online, okay? Because of, of COVID, it was like an online only event. Um, as you can see, this is not like, obviously not like uh, it has, doesn't have an ergonomic design. It's, it's a prototype, okay? Just full disclaimer here. Um, but it works. So this is the live showcase uh, beginning of this year in January. And uh, there's, there's a link at the bottom and I can forward this to the organization and so sort of share it with you. And, you know, if you're interested, look it up. It's a very nice video uh, where it's basically an interview and I, I showcase how the thing works. Um, 
So I'm not going to do that now because of logistic reasons, um, mostly, and, and limited time have available to prepare. Um, <clears throat> so what was your original intent? Well, this is about making new games for old machines. And, you know, in the same vein as we had the old games that were really good, and there's still, like, a number of games that are being played on Amiga that are, you know, still, you know, you know, stand the test of time, so to speak. But with dual stick, imagine you can do other stuff. You can do play games that have never been available for Amiga because you were you just had one joystick, basically four directions or eight, and one button, mostly, right? And we wanted something that was going to be uh, that people could buy at, at some point and wouldn't have to mod their Amiga, right? So, and it had also to, to you know, it had to fit one joystick port instead of two. There's, I mean, have been some other designs where, where people use two jo joystick ports to do twice as much. And we want, didn't want to do that. And on top of that, we didn't want like an external power source. Um, it, it needs to be fed and powered by the Amiga itself, okay? So imagine what you could, you know, what we, what we could generate with this kind of device, it would lead to new opportunities for doing high score and, and, and uh, competitions, but also it would, would maybe invoke new development of games and maybe competitions for developing the best dual stick based game or we got, right? So some examples of the, like a genre that could work really well is the top down shooter like we have Mutant Storm and Geometry Wars on PC and Xbox, for instance, right? You know, imagine being able to play that on Amiga, like an old computer. So, so any game with specific requirements, like I said. So handle two sticks concurrently, that would we be asking players to do, you know, for convenience or as a real requirement, that's even better because this would allow for new types of gameplay, right? Uh, Apart from new games, of course, we can hack original games as well. I mean, there's plenty of really interesting ones. Um, but it, it would take retrofitting new design requirements into the original code. Uh, and uh, and, and if, you, if you're at it, you should also consider tweaking the original game to make it a bit harder. Because like what we did in the, for our preparation of our showcase, we hacked Commando for the C64, the KO to the S version, and the Chaos Engine Amiga. And those games were suddenly very, very, very playable to the extent that I could just finish it without dying, right? Because the thing is, you could walk in any direction and then just aim in another direction and, and not have to stop walking, right? Now imagine, and we didn't do this yet, but, but uh, Turrican 1 and 2, you remember where you have to, to, you know, stand still and then aim and shoot. Now you could keep running while shooting and aiming at the same time, right? <clears throat> So how does it work? Well, basically, uh, any kind of analog stick would would like would work like a paddle, like you had back in the day as well, right? So uh, it's basically based on an RC circuit, and an RC circuit is a combination of a resistor and a capacitor, and the combination will lead to a, a, a specific um, charge time for the capacitor, right? So it's a timing device, so to speak. Now internally, this is how it's like organized. On the right, you see a picture and you see an external part and the diagonal and the internal part. So the internal part has the capacitor. So that's fixed. That's what's inside the Amiga. Um, and externally, you'll have like a resistor that controls the impedance and therefore effectively controls like the charge time for the internal capacitor. And when a certain voltage threshold is, 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 um, is reached, a timer will stop counting internally. And this is basically you know, a poor man's um, analog digital converter is basically how it works internally, okay? So that is the premise. Now, we had a little impede dance, so to speak. There was like, um, uh, the problem was that contem contemporary sticks you could get like, that are inside like PlayStation controller or an Xbox controller or any Chinese and Taiwanese manufacturer, they would create 10 kilo ohm resistors uh, for the potential meters, okay? Whereas back in the old days, you know, a 470 kilo ohms resistor potential meter was expected. So this led me to think like I, I kind of, and you know, this full disclaimer here, I'm not an electronics engineer by trade, 
uh, I learned a bit about it in order to to be able to 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 contemplate things, but uh, not to the extent where I know exactly what I'm talking about, right? So I wanted to basically uh, amplify impedance, right? That is not a thing. Um, so, but what is the thing is as soon as I find out when I posted my question on Reddit, I, I, you know, answer came within the hour and some really cool guy told me, well, what you could do is sync like a lot of current and effectively this, this relates to uh, increasing your resistance, your impedance. And uh, while we're at it, he added some, some suggestion to quickly decharge uh, the capacitor uh, on the external board in order to, uh, uh, to make sure. Um, so that's kind of how it works. And then the next question becomes, okay, so, but how, if, if like, like a joystick port has only two analog pins, how do you do four axes? Well, like remember there's two sticks, each having two axes. So that's four axes, that's four potentiometers. How do you do that? Well, turns out you can multiplex by using a special pin, which is the fire button, by the way, but not use it as fire button, but change it to output. And then basically you can drive between two states. So that's what I did. So I end up having two half frames. And I say half frames because within a frame you're measuring the threshold, that the timer is gonna run. And that means within 20, approximately 20 milliseconds, you want all the data to be read. Now, since we're multiplexing and having two states, that effectively changes to two times 10 milliseconds. That also means that within, you know, part of the frame, 10 milliseconds, the counter is only ever going to get so high until it gets reset again, right? So that means uh, another uh, digital value is, is going to be read and it's never going to be 255, but at max is going to be 127. Basically, you, you're losing one bit of precision. Now, it turns out that is fine for our purposes. So lastly, on the software side, um, there's, there's no rocket science here. I mean, it's basically um, per frame, you're gonna drive pin six low uh, first or high in whatever order you wanna do it. Uh, you're gonna reset, decharge the capacitor effectively. You're gonna wait until 10 milliseconds ends. You're gonna read the data and store it internally um, in some memory. Then you drive pin six high, uh, you flip it around. You do the same thing, you rinse and repeat. And then in the end, you're combining the two separate stores in a critical section, so we, we, we won't have any race conditions, getting frames or half frames mixed up. So looking at our project, the current states, now there's some pictures to, to, to show a bit more about it. So this is the uh, schematic for the dual stick. Um, this particular version has a switch that can switch between different um, capacitance. Um, one is for the C64, one is for the Amiga. And that's because they have different internal capacity, uh, capacitors. Um, and I'm totally willing to share this with anyone that's interested, by the way. Um, this is the PCB that I had printed and created uh, without the components, one version of it. This is the one with the components. So you can see the buttons, you can see two sticks, you can see some in, uh, integrated circuits, some transistors and capacitors and some uh, resistors and some more buttons and a port. Um, then this is like the case. I already gave the full disclaimer. I am not like an industrial designer of any sort, but this did the job for the prototype. Um, <clears throat> but it's like, honestly, I think it's really cool that people are nowadays are able to do their own electronics and, and print their cases and just have a working product. Uh, this is a cable that's like, yeah, I found this. It's it's uh, it's the Sega Saturn extension cable, and this is like exactly what I needed. Uh, they're massively available, so this is good. And the thing is, I didn't want to have the joystick have like a standard like cable attached because I think that's annoying, and you can easily de decouple it. Now, this is a, a like a sort of screenshot from the setup I used for the Amiga Ireland. Uh, event. So I was running Commando on, on a, a C64. Here you can see on the screen, it's called Commando DS for dual stick. Um, and uh, you see me holding uh, one of the controllers that was tweaked for a C64 in this case. Uh, the next is the, the Chaos Engine, same thing. So 
so you can with the left stick you control the uh, the, the protagonist while with the right stick you, you control the aim of the protagonist so you can shoot in the right direction and run in you know to the left at the same time without without issues making the game a lot easier um so and then what has happened since january well nothing really um this is a hobby project i'm mostly on my own uh i have a very demanding job like everyone else i know uh i had some minor health issues i'm, I'm good now but it, that's it that hasn't helped so the, basically the usual um I must say, when when Jerry uh, approached me, I, I I felt like oh, I need to pick up this project again because it's so cool, right? So there's a very high chance that, I'll, especially if there's going to be some help, that I'll be moving forward soon. So what needs to be done? Well, we need a new programmable circuit design. I want this, you know, as much as I think this is an elegant solution with the use of minimal components. I think ultimately, when we have like some some PIC or something we could uh, easily adapt to multiple types of consoles. I mean, C64 works, Amiga works, I'm sure. And there's probably a lot more 8-bitters and 16-bitters that are just going to work in it because they, they all work on the same Atari joystick port uh, uh, design. <clears throat> I think the only thing it needs is like pin 6 to be able to be put that uh, as an output port. Um, obviously, for, for like a final product, we're going to need an ergonomic case design that's not within my uh, field of expertise, obviously, so we're going to need some help with that. Uh, ultimately, we're going to need molds for mass production. Well, mass could even be as non-massive as like 3,000 people or something, uh, 3,000 sales, but it's still not something you would do in the shed, right? It's a lot of work, and you want it to be pristine and, and feel good. Then, of course, a driver, you know, that's being built, but it's not like a package I have available right now. It's like a work in progress. Um, so together with an API, like a library, software library or something, and um, some documentation to go with it. And, if, and last but not least, of course, games. I mean, I would love for a lot of people who, who do game development to actually start spending time on designing, implementing games using dual stick and do stuff that no one has ever seen, seen before in Amiga. So <clears throat> this is where I'm appealing to anyone that's, that's you know, uh, in, in, the, in California right now, but also worldwide that is uh, tuning, tuning in today or later when they see it on YouTube, um, you know, to appeal to you for, for help. I mean, I'm, I can use help with electronics, with case design, funding, game development, et cetera. And you can reach me on route.egas at icog.com. So final thoughts. Now, I, I talked to you about the genesis of the project, the various use cases um, of, of games, the, um, uh, the, how it works, the project, and uh, current and uh, future. I hope to have triggered some kind of spark um, for you know, seeing this device getting developed and marketed and then leading to a lot of new potential for new products. So I talked to you about the call for help, and I would like to thank you for listening to my uh, little talk, and I'm happy to answer any questions if there's any. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Ralph. Appreciate that. It's um, it's really interesting work that you're doing. Have you had a lot of game developers reach out, interested in? Uh, yeah. In no. No, that's the thing. I mean, there was like. Uh, seriously, uh, during the Amiga Ireland online event, there was a lot of really positive reaction on the show, right? And that's a, that's kind of it. I mean, I think one guy reached out to me afterwards, so it might have just been a case of me me not putting enough effort afterwards to to gather all the you know the people and their interest um, because I didn't have a lot of time afterwards. Or it might be just that people weren't that interested after all and just getting excited with, with the event with some beers. But, <laughs> you know, so not a lot has happened. So that, that also didn't help for my mo motivation to, to push on quickly after the show, right? Yeah, gotcha. I mean, it, is it possible to, to get prototype units if someone were interested to, to do that? Yes. Yes, I can build one, you know, so I'm going to build very slowly, you know. It's, but, it, you know, I could, could do a build in a day or so. That's not a problem, but if it's very labor, very laborious, of course, 
Um, but yeah, I mean, if someone is interested and reaches out to me and says, hey, I totally have this idea, I want to work on it, I think it's fantastic, can, can you send me like a working version? Yes, totally. I'm totally up for it. So here, here's, a, here's what I'll, I'll suggest, right, to get things moving, right, the, the spark. Maybe, um, uh, I don't know if you have a PayPal donation or set up a donation page so that yeah. people can send you seed money to build a handful of units and uh, promote them into the developer community. People are building games because, you know, I, I don't know what the cost is, like what it would take, but it'd be good to have an order of magnitude of how much it takes to get the joystick in one of the modules. Um, and so you could build five of them and get them out there. Because otherwise it's, you know, like you say, it's gonna be hard to make it go anywhere. And I think it's a uh, you know, really interesting technology. That's such a good suggestion. I mean, it's, you know, it's weird that I didn't think of it, but thanks. I mean, that, that makes a lot of sense actually. Yeah, yeah. cause I'm uh, you know, as a, as a crazy Amiga user, and I, and I think I'm crazy as most of us, but uh, you know, one thing I do is I seek out projects and I donate. I try to give money. I, people release software, especially for uh, Amigo S4, I buy it. I don't really care what it is, whether I'm actually going to use it. I want to buy it because if we don't spend the money to help developers like yourself, then there's no motivation to keep going and to do interesting things. Yeah, you're right. Uh, makes total sense. Thanks, thanks for the suggestion. I'll, I'll you know, try set up that up uh, ASAP. That's super cool. Thank you. Yeah, so um, let me open up to the show floor at Annie West here. Does anybody have a question for Ralph about the DualShock dual stick uh, joystick? Is this mic live? Uh, maybe. <coughs> Can you hear me, Ralph? Yeah, you're yeah. Right. Oh, okay, cool. All right, so I've got a good mic here. Someone's got a question. Um, I'll kick it off, and uh, you may not be prepared to do this, but I know in Amiga Ireland, you sh showed an old game that you had made at the time to actually tear into the vowels and reach over the joystick controls to yeah. make the game more useful, more usable, more user friendly than the original. Is that something you could pull up on the stream, or is that just not, not prepared? Oh, uh, not now. I'm sorry. Uh, maybe, maybe if there's some time tomorrow, I can try to spend some time on it, like in my morning tomorrow. But even then, I cannot guarantee it. It's been a while. I touched it, so these these things rot, right? So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. On this PC4, on the Amiga, was the case engine from the Bitmark book. Yeah, yeah. So it was one of those games that was kind of hard to to play because you had to like be looking in the way you're shooting, but with a joystick yeah. you can move one direction, shoot another, and just really tear the level up in a way that was yeah. never possible before. Yeah, I, I'd probably pay 60 bucks to play Chaos Engine with dual stick, honestly. Oh. <laughs> Easily. Easily. Yeah. 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 <laughs> if that's what it costs, then uh, it's, where do I send the check? Well, thanks. I, you know, I want to do some market research. Now I know the price. Really? <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, like I said, let's, uh, you know, for that spark, let's get started and, and let open it up for, a, I don't know, a kickstart. That's a little bit much work, but just put a target on your website. You get five things built so you can ship them out to the broadest to people who are interested. That's how we get started in the community. That's how we do it. That's totally cool, man. I'm totally going to do that. Well, any other questions, for Ralph? Okay. Well, thank you, Ralph, so much for uh, making yourself available to us and joining the annual 2021 stream. I uh, really appreciate your time today, and have a wonderful day, and hopefully you can uh, watch the rest of it via the uh, via YouTube. You're most welcome, and, uh, you know, good luck with the rest of the show. Thank you. All right? Bye-bye. Bye-bye.